we're going to see King Omri. And here's a brief description of him. He's Israel's sixth king. His name means my sheaf. He reigns 12 years during the reign of Asa, king of Judah. You find him in 1 Kings 16, 16 through 29. And the prophet looks like Elijah. So last week we talked about King Zimri. And the story of Zimri and Omri go together. So let's look back a little at the account of King Zimri. 1 Kings 16, 15 through 16 says, In the twenty and seventh year of Asa, king of Judah, did Zimri reign seven days in Tirzah. And the people were encamped against Gibeathan, which belonged to the Philistines. And the people that were encamped heard say, Zimri hath conspired and hath also slain the king. Wherefore all Israel made Omri, the captain of the host, king over Israel that day in the camp. So I want to use Omri's story to tell you why do things continue to get worse? Why do things in this world continue to get worse? The first thing I want to show you is that men do not learn from fiery judgment that they see happen to others. They don't learn from it. In 1 Kings sixteen seventeen, it says, And Omri went up from Gibeathan, and all Israel with him, and they besieged Tirzah. Tirza. And it came to pass, when Zimri saw that the city was taken, that he went into the palace of the king's house, and burnt the king's house over him with fire, and died. So you see, what happened was, Zimri killed King Elah, and stole the throne. And Omri... And all Israel with him come to kill Zimri. But when Zimri finds out the city is taken, he ends up ending his life in fire. He burns down the palace and burns himself with it. Omri should have taken note of this fiery judgment that fell on Zimri. And even though he killed himself, this was still a fiery judgment that fell on Zimri's life. He wanted to live and reign. You know, if, if he had it his way, he would have lived and reigned and killed Omri and everybody else. But he ends up taking his own life so that Omri couldn't kill him. He killed himself because Omri was about to slay him. And God allows this to happen and ends his life with a fiery judgment. And things continue to get worse because men ignore these fiery judgments. Omri witnessed Zimri get killed by fire. And they... Uh, people today ignore the fact that hell is real and is a place of literal fire. They ignore the fact that we will all stand before God and be judged one day and men will be cast into a lake of fire. They ignore the fact that men reap what they sow. Galatians 6, 7 through 8 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. You see, a mur murderer ignores the fact that so many before him were caught and put behind bars for life or faced a death sentence. Men won't learn from a fiery judgment. Seeing judgment fall on someone else should be a deterrent to crime for you. In Matthew 7, 23, Jesus said, And then will I, will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Reading the story about the Antichrist and false prophet in the book of Revelation should be a deterrent to crime for you. Men are going to face a fiery judgment. Omri should have realized, man, Zimri faced a fiery judgment. Even though he killed himself, what led to him killing himself? His sin did. Why couldn't Omri see that and maybe go another direction? It says in Revelation twenty fourteen and 15, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. A fiery judgment is coming on all those who will not believe the gospel. Things continue to get worse because men will ignore these fiery judgments. Omri ends up doing worse than Zimri. He ends up doing worse than Elah. 
he ends up doing worse than Jeroboam, than Rehoboam, because he ignored a fiery judgment. Next, Omri didn't learn from the mistakes of others. In 1 Kings 16, 18 through 20, it says, And it came to pass when Zimri saw that the city was taken, that he went into the palace of the king's house and burnt the king's house over him with fire and died for his sins, which he sinned in doing evil in the sight of the Lord and walking in the way of Jeroboam and in his sin, which he did to make Israel to sin. Now the rest of the acts of Zimri and his treason that he wrought, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? This thing happened to Zimri for his sins, which he sinned in doing evil in the sight of the Lord. Omri forgot to learn from the mistakes of others. He would have known what happened to Jeroboam. He would have known what happened to Elah. He would have known what happened to Zimri. The best teacher is not just experience, but rather the experience of others, because you can see how things worked out for them so that you don't have to go through it yourself. He could have looked at the life of all these other kings and saw, wow, it did not work out for them. They didn't care about God. They didn't live for the Lord. He could have looked at King Asa over there, who was still reigning through all of these kings over there in Judah, and thought, wow, it's working for him. He's, he's living for the Lord. Let me follow in his footsteps. But he didn't learn from the mistakes. You see, me and you can learn from the mistakes of these wicked kings. That's why we got these stories. For example, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, starting in verse 6, he says, Now these things were our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as, we, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of the of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. So you see, the Old Testament, the stories, this is for our admonition. It's for our learning. The best teacher is learning from the experience of others. If we see these kings doing wicked things and doing things that led them to a fiery judgment, then we need to go the other way. Things get worse because for some reason, people never learn from the mistakes of others. It always blows my mind how you see your father drinking alcohol. You saw it ruined his life. He beats your mother. He beats you. He tries to get you to drink. And yet you go and do it anyway? Shouldn't you say, well, hey, this this has made my dad a horrible person. Why should I go and do the same things? You know, you don't want to follow in the mistakes of others. You look at these um, mug shots of people that are on meth, and you see they started out a beautiful woman with pretty blonde hair, blue eyes, nice skin, and now she's got hair that looks like she's been sleeping in a dungeon and her eyes are bloodshot and her skin it looks like an old woman's skin why would you want to follow in the footsteps of that you need to learn from the mistakes of others but things get worse and worse because men ignore the fiery judgment men ignore the mistakes of others and next also because of the fight for power things continue to get worse because men want power and they fight for power in 1 Kings 16, 21, it says, Then were the people of Israel divided into two parts. Half of the people followed Tibni, the son of Ginneth, to make him king, and half followed Omri. So Zimri, king of Israel, is dead. He killed himself in the fire. Asa, still reigning over in Judah, and Omri and Tibni have another mini split in the kingdom here. You see, there was already a split back in the kingdom that made it be the two southern tribes as one kingdom judah and benjamin and then you had the other the ten other tribes which is referred to as israel and then you have another little split in the kingdom here with omri and tibni in the a split in the ten northern tribes half going to omri and half going to tibni and there you, you'll see a fight for power in first Kings sixteen twenty two, it says but the people that followed omri prevailed 
against the people that followed Tibni, the son of Geneth. So Tibni, Timni died and Omri reigned. And so notice the fight for power. This is God's game of thrones. You see, a fight for power from the beginning to the ending. People trying to knock somebody else off of a throne. And these kings get full of Lucifer, who is the former king of both kingdoms, who's been trying to knock people off the throne since, since he lost his. Things get worse because men want to fight for power. They want to take over. They want to be the greatest. They will do anything they can to get power. They will do immoral things to obtain more than they already have. <coughs> they will come up with easier ways to kill people. They will come up with new ways to deceive people. They will come up with ways to demoralize people. Because people that don't have morals are easy to take over. You see, you don't want a society of law-abiding citizens. You don't want a society of Bible believers. Those people are harder to control. You want people that are demoralized, people that rely on you, people that live for the flesh. Those types of people are easier to take over. So why do things get worse? Because of the fight for power. And when you're fighting for power, you want to make everybody else easy to take over and with leaders like you're seeing here jeroboam omri zimri with leaders like that it makes the morals of the people get worse and worse you see the downfall of a nation just like it talks about how jeroboam caused the people to sin and then in first Kings sixteen twenty three, it says in the 30 and first year of asa king of judah began omri to reign over israel 12 years Six years reigned he in Tirzah. So, you see, Omri started being a king in the 27th year of Asa at the suicide of King Zimri. But it says Omri reigned over Israel in the 31st year of Asa, king of Judah, instead of the 27th year. And this is simply because he didn't begin reigning over the whole thing until Tibni died. So, it's not counting... Those the uh, times that he was reigning with Tibni, with the split going on, it doesn't start counting it until the 31st year after Tibni dies. That's why it looks like there's a contradiction, but there's actually no contradiction here. In 1 Kings 16.24, it says, And he bought the hill of Samaria of Shemer for two talents of silver, and built on the hill, and called the name of the city which he built after the name of Shemer, owner of the hill, Samaria. So Omri was king of the hill. He was top dog and could have used his authority for good. He could have led a people back to the Lord. But instead, look at verse 25. But Omri wrought evil in the eyes of the Lord and did worse than all that were before him. What a great accomplishment for the devil because Omri did worse than all that were before him. Even worse than Jeroboam, the man who's been so notoriously known for being evil, that we have yet to make a study about these kings without having to mention him. The fight for power will cause a man to be extremely wicked. Now next, what's another reason things get worse with time is men pass wickedness to their children. In 1 Kings 16, 26, it says, For he walked, that talking about Omri, for he walked in all the way of Jeroboam the son of Nebat. He didn't learn from his mistakes. And in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin, to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger with their vanities. Now the rest of the acts of Omri, which he did, and his might that he showed, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? So Omri slept with his fathers, and was buried in Samaria. And Ahab his son reigned in his stead. So Omri walked in the way of Jeroboam. Jeroboam's false religion passed on down through these kings. They worshiped false gods and they lived in wickedness. Omri's children didn't grow up honoring the preaching of the godly prophets. They grew up loving sin and the ways of wickedness. They didn't grow up giving attention to the law. Omri had a son named Ahab. And if you know anything about these kings, then you know it would be hard for any king to exceed Ahab in wickedness. And this is Omri's son. He passed on this wickedness down to his son Ahab. That's why things get worse with time. Men pass their wickedness on to their kids, and their kids turn out worse than they were. 
As a father, you can pass your ungodly morals on down to your children. Then they pass them on to their grandchildren, and so on and so forth. Things get worse with time. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived, because parents will not teach the children. It says in Micah 6.16, 6, For the statutes of Omri are kept, and all the works of the house of Ahab, and ye walk in their counsels. It just passes right on down. A man can influence his family for generations. Many times a child sees what their parents say as the gospel. Their beliefs and morals are shaped by their parents. They will take little quotes and phrases and rules that the parents have and use those to override the Bible itself. You know that you there's something in you that wants to stick by those little things that your parents lived by growing up. And you'll believe that as Bible doctrine until somebody might set you straight and tell you, well, that isn't actually right. Even Christians will do that. Their parents can teach them something and they live by it the rest of their life. And sometimes it's a bad thing. Omri taught ungodly statutes. He wasn't teaching them the Proverbs of Solomon. He wasn't singing to them the Psalms of David. He was teaching them out of the Jeroboam Bible, which probably said something like, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. It probably said something like, love everybody and everything, and everything's okay. And you can do anything because God is love. It probably said something like, God loves you just the way you are living. You know, they weren't being taught out of the word of God that they had. Things continue to get worse because the parents won't teach the children. Things continue to get worse because men ignore a fiery judgment that they see happen to others. Things continue to get worse because men won't learn from the mistakes of others. Things continue to get worse because of the fight for power. But you can break the cycle. You can break the chain. You don't have to be like an ungodly parent. You don't have to be like an ungodly pastor or somebody that you might have had. You can serve God. Don't let other people cause you to serve the devil. It's not God's fault that those people did that. You can't blame God for what somebody else did. You can live godly in a world when everybody else lives ungodly.